everyone and welcome to another time traveling episode. I am from the past talking to you in the future. Since I've got quite a big goal for today's episode and I don't know how long it's going to take so uh, let's just you know quickly look at the base a little bit you never know it might be different might be the complete same it's really going to depend on RNG as to how long this video is going to take. So I mentioned throughout the playthrough that I want to get Super Argentavis. I want to breed up really, really powerful Argentavis because they're the kind of dinosaur that you just use lots and lots and lots of and it's really handy to have ones that have got, you know, high stamina, high weight and of course high melee and high health is always a nice bonus as well. So, so far I've bred up Heliotrope. This is my purple Argentavis, completely unmutated, so zero mutations, nice clean family history. And the highest stats that Heliotrope has is 47 stamina and 47 weight. So now that we have more people on the server, everyone's been very generous in sharing all the various stats that they've been getting. And I got this one here from Blue Tail, which is not only totally quite a pretty bird to begin with, but it's got two extra stamina and it has five extra melee, which I managed to breed into this 275 base here. Actually, that's got extra melee. Wait, did I mutate? No, it didn't. It's got one extra melee point than Blue Tail's one. Let me just double check. That, that definitely did not mutate, right? No. <laughs> okay, fair enough then. So that is a combination. I'm very confused. That is a combination between um, Heliotrope, Blue Tail, and then clearly one or two others, which I'm trying to get into this color. This cyan and orange one is now my new goal because I've been enjoying the purple ones, but I'm a little bit bored of it now. And I like this really vibrant teal and orange. So my next goal was to combine these two, but then Zacharin and Gunnar provided this one, Chonky Girl, with the 51 food. And obviously 51 food isn't very good at all, but if I'm gonna go with Super Argies, I may as well go Super Argie, you know? I may as well have every stat be high. So I will also be combining this into, uh, oh no, oh, the blue one's the male. Ooh. Okay, it's gonna take a while to combine all these together. Um, yes, I'm gonna combine all of these together. Uh, again, it's really gonna rely on RNG. I've been hatching so many eggs just to get these two here. Perfect colors and perfect stats. Thankfully, I've now got the S plus mutator so I can growth pulse and change genders and make this a little bit more flexible. But the next hardest thing is going to be to try and get more Argentavis. I'm gonna go on a massive taming spree try to get as many high level Argentavis kibble tamed as I possibly can and see if I can try get 50 stats in every stat. That's gonna be such a gamble. That's the part that could take a while. But if I can get a base 50 in every stat and then start mutating, oh, we're gonna get some results. Now, like I said, I have been leaving for things to breed and I'm gonna need to do a lot of breeding on that. So let's go ahead then and just quickly chuck all of these guys out and the characters while I'm at it. So unfortunately, by breeding two different females into the one male, this is gonna be quite a bit harder to differentiate and get the right stats that I want. Hello? Uh, please leave. No, okay then. Well, anyway. So immediately I do see that I have a 270 and obviously I want the highest level ones because they're the most likely to have all the relevant stats. This one, it's missing the stats from the mother and it's missing all the colorations as well. So that is a, you know, a bit of a purge. Same again for the 268 triplets, I think. Yeah, 268 triplets. Again, didn't get the stats, didn't get the colors. They are also a purge. Oh no, this is gonna take a while. In fact, checking all the females, not a single one of them got any of the colors I want. What about the males? They also did not get a single color, so not a single of those Argentavis were worth using. So what I'm going to do then, I'm going to get this male, I'm going to call it Teal, I'm just going to put him away entirely, I'll leave him in Teleotrope, and we're just going to throw him out of the equation. I'm going to grab this 275, and I'm going to change its gender. Oh, it's got a mating cooldown. Right, I can't do it for another hour. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, so what I'll do then, I'll leave that there, I will swap the genders in an hour and get them breeding and in the meanwhile, just try and get as many brand new Argentavis as I can and see if I can maybe get some plus 50 stats. Ooh, this is a part that might take quite some time. Okay, so I'm done with my first session of Taming Argentavis and I spent about four hours doing this on live stream and naming all the Argentavis after various viewers, so thank you everyone for keeping me company. And out of the 20 odd Argies, all about 125 plus levels, I got one. That was an upgrade. That was Dragon Queen and this one has one extra point in oxygen. That's it. And of course, you know, the 51 food from Zachran's Chonky Gal 
and that's that's all I have to show for 20 tames and I got one point in oxygen. I knew this was going to take a while, but it's going to take even longer than I thought. So on day two, I tamed another six or seven Argentavas on livestream, and I did get two upgrades in the end. I've got Lingle here with the 46 health, and I've got Mind Wolf with the 47 oxygen. So that already completely overwrites the 45 oxygen I got in my previous bird, which I didn't even have a chance to breed into the main one yet, but the main one is currently 282 thus far. Now I just need to combine the extra five points of oxygen and health, the health one actually being quite useful. Meanwhile, word has gotten out that I'm looking for many more Argentavas, and people on the server have started looking out for them as well, as kind as they are. And I had a couple of donations from Storm, which sadly none of them I can add in yet. We do have this very, very pretty one here with the 51 food, but I already have a 51 food, exactly. I also got this one here from Blood, which has 43 melee which is again just not usable <laughs> it's so unfortunate but it looks like it's a pretty one. Oh, it's a very pretty one very blue speaking of blue blue tail also gave me a breed of one of her birds which is a very lovely color scheme and i'm really debating using that one instead of one of my other ones i've got i've got so many color options it is ridiculous Meanwhile, Blood also found a wild 150 Argentavis so with 39 points into weight which would have been amazing if it rolled well for this project but it died to a couple of Carnos, unfortunately. And then later, Psychosol found another 150 of 37 base HP. Again, big potential. Loki went up and snapped it, and it rolled four extra points. It had the potential to be amazing, and it barely rolled anything extra into its highest stat. So this has definitely proven to be quite the challenge, just getting the base breeds. So we've only had one wave of eggs so far, but I figured, hey, you never know. Just see how they rolled. You never know, I got triplet males, goddamn. But otherwise, these got the health stats, that is good. They lacked um, basically things from the father. So if I was to grab, I don't know, maybe I can keep two of these, gender bend them, and uh, I make the breed of the father, they'll actually have a much greater chance of getting all the stats. That's actually a really nice touch. And this one here got the oxygen. And again, all the stats are missing from the father. Oh wow, this is actually going really well so far. Right, it's time for another check on the Argentavis. Only really look at the max level ones. I mentioned before, I'm trying to combine everything, so anything, you know, less than max isn't really good enough. It's a 284 right here. That's got the health mutation and not the oxygen. Cool, so that is now one of our new major females. And the 22 males here, none of them have the oxygen stat. They're all from the health, so that's just obviously triplets from the health one. Uh, that one was from the oxygen parents, but didn't get the stat that one is bad level that one is awful that one is again from the health one that one lost the oxygen <laughs> okay so oh great well that one got the oxygen and a melee mutation it's a bit soon for that unfortunately i mean i want to get those mutations soon but uh not now so okay then in the end then we got one health one still waiting on the oxygen again so it has been 10 days since the previous clip and in those 10 days no one including myself have been able to find any better Argentavis except for one from Blue Tail which has increased our oxygen stat from 50 to 54. That, that's it. That's it. <laughs> so, thank you Blue Tail. That's wonderful. I did want to get as high stats as possible but otherwise though no one's been able to find a single bird with like 50 anywhere else. A lot of people have been trying finding really awesome looking wild birds and maximum taming them as much as they could and no one can find anything that has breached the 50 mark on any other stat which is really sad uh, but however during this time it has since occurred to me let me just quickly get a growth pulse going uh, actually yeah grab that one there yeah it has since occurred to me that in the time it's taking and failing to take to get an extra plus three or plus four stats on the other stats on the creature, I could easily use that time to just farm element and farm more mutations because I'm pretty sure the S plus mutator, I can force extra mutations past the 2020 stack anyway. And in that case, I don't really need that extra three, four, five base stats of the foundation of the birds to give me a head start mutation. So that makes no sense, like in hindsight. So it would have been fun to have had base 50, like maybe as natural birds. But in terms of the mutation project, I plan to mutate them like crazy anyway. It would actually be faster. 
for me to do all the caves and all the bosses during live streams, get all the elements, get all the mutation pulses and growth pulses. It'd be faster to do all of that than to, you know, tame hundreds more regular Argentavers just to try and roll plus 50. It's a bit unfortunate because having 50 in every stat would have been a very clean and satisfying beginning to start off from, but it'll be fine though. So the current plan, obviously this male has every stat I want. This is now my prime male. I'm, uh, she's already on a cooldown, the, the mother, so. So I've growth pulsed four of his sisters. <laughs> That sounds so horrible. That way I can try and combine his stats into a female quicker. And then once I do that, it's time to make a harem. Four harems of <laughs> a bunch of clean females. So I'm gonna need many, many perfect females. And each harem of females is gonna have a mutated male that be progressively more and more mutated. Because it's easier to stack all of your mutations onto a male since it will just, you know, spread to every female and it just kind of works out. Maybe at some point I should do like a proper breeding guide. So it's been about a month since that previous clip and I've got some good news and some bad news. Now the good news is that I had a donation of about a 50 stamina RG and a 52, I think, health RG, which would be great for the line. However, the bad news is that I already have all of these bred up and I already have all of these babies in the terminal. So while I would really love to include the new additions, I already have so many ready for the massive orgy that they're about to embark upon. So sadly, I won't really be getting those additions this time around. It's such a shame though, because that would've been really nice. But yeah, as you can see, I've got so many, so I'm gonna go ahead and just grab, oh, that's the wrong thing to do. Uh, how many do I want to have? I'd say for the time being, about 30 females. Now, back when I had this entire idea in mind, I hadn't even begun Scorched Earth yet. Now, of course, a couple of months later, <laughs> I've got all of this, and I especially have this. So far, this is going to be my official mutate breeding area because it occurred to me that uh, I don't really want to build more and more things on... Uh, oh, can I have a bin here? No, I cannot. <laughs> it occurred to me that I don't want to keep on squeezing in more and more structures on the island since my base is already getting quite laggy and it's a bit much for some people as it is. So I decided... Oh, and also I can't see myself coming back to Scorched Earth much more as more maps get introduced. So I thought, you know, great opportunity to make this my breeding area. Now it's a bit of a simple build, as you can see, just a bit of a container with a couple of aircons. And I did already bring a bit of tech with me, did I? No, I did not. Yeah, that's right, I need to, oh, I still need to bring a generator over. As of this point, I haven't actually done a um, manticore yet, but I'm currently in the process of doing the caves. So like I said earlier, it's a bit of a uh, interesting time traveling episode. Right, and that is 30 female Argentavers all placed down in three little separate clumps, not to mention the three males all around here. I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly check the range. That will not get everything, so I'm gonna quickly go ahead then and just increase that by about, what, like plus five? Uh, yep, that's all of those. That's absolutely everything. Right, so that will cause everything to rapidly age. Now, I've done it this way. I brought them over as babies instead of maturing them elsewhere because uh, Argentavers' breeding range is actually quite small. And by clumping them up together like this, mainly the females, by doing this, it just means that um, they're guaranteed, every single one of them are guaranteed to reach the male. And of course, by having them separated, it means I can have three individual clumps for three individual mutation lines all at the same time. Now, theoretically, I could put down many, many more than 10 females in one clump, so 10 females per mutation line, but doing that will just cause lots of, lots of lag. And like, especially, you know, when you render it and when other people come to the server and render these in, I know it's gonna cause some lag and I, I don't wanna do that. You know, I wanna set a good example. I wanna make sure things are, you know, working <laughs> as well as productive. Okay, so this is officially, finally, the beginning of the actual mutation breeding process. It's uh, been a bit of a build-up, and I feel a lot better waiting and putting this in Scorched Earth instead of kind of forcing it on the island. I think it'll be a lot better here in the long term, especially as I can utilize other creatures here as well. Maybe not very big creatures, but I can still utilize this little facility in general. Now, for those who are wondering, how do you hardcore breed in the first place? Hopefully this visual kind of helps. Essentially, you, <laughs> the eggs. you want as many clean females as possible. And by clean, I mean, good God, that does not sound very clean. Zero, zero mutations, that's the most important thing. And the vital part is the male. So I want all the mutations to land on the male. Now, obviously via S+, I can always just change the gender of the offspring, the ones that successfully mutate the way I want them to. 
and to just always make it a male because that way the male has a harem of females to just increase the chances of these stats as opposed to if it was a female born of mutations she only has the one mate the one cooldown with the male passing on the genes it's 10 females 10 cooldowns 10 eggs 10 chances of the mutation actually landing where i want it to in the future i'll make like an actual concise video because i know that mutation breeding is very over explained in a lot of videos it is tricky to wrap your head around the first time but after the first time it's quite straightforward this is the uh, unfortunate part i'm gonna have to wait for the female cooldowns every time and the cooldowns gonna range from about i'd say two hours to four and a half yeah so two hour one there let's say two hour four and a half hours yeah so if I wanted to be maximum efficiency, I'd do this every five hours, which is a bit rough. But hey, you can see why I wanted so many females, just more and more chances for the mutation to land. Okay, all the eggs are about done. That has trapping enabled, but there's no soul traps. I'm glad I got a bunch on me then. That's fantastic. I only really need 30. I'll just chuck that in for now. Let's go ahead and hatch all of these up. Thankfully, the air cons in here are going to help improve the incubation, because I have since uh, had to nerf hatching due to... Ooh the new running anathus creature right what do we have then okay so this is actually really funny then while i am of course including three multiple gene pools and while they are currently all zero zero so it doesn't really matter which father is you know which baby whatever in the end only one of them the melee father yielded a melee daughter <laughs> Now, that's okay, because it means I can just use, say, the health one from weight. I mean, it's still 0-0. Zero, zero. He could just be repurposed into the health line instead. It works out. But it goes to show from 10 females in three different lines got the correct mutation. This is very, very RNG. Right then, just to save myself a bit of trouble, I'm going to use all the males for this one then. So I've got three males. So this one is the weight stat. The red one is the melee stat which leaves this one as the health stat. And uh, I guess I will come back in five hours. So the second wave of breeding is already done and I managed to get another mutation onto health, weight, but not melee. So as you can see, melee is still one out of 20, while the other two do have much larger stat weights. And I've just finished the third set now. Go ahead and hatch all of those up. And now, I think it's pretty much safe to assume I can discount everything below level 306, maybe, actually? Uh, let's have a quick little look regardless. Oh, okay, so even though it didn't work on the second line, or the second attempt, on the third attempt, I do now have melee on melee. So that means I can now put that to the side. That's now melee 2 out of 20. Wow, it turns out I've gotten at least 3 RGs, but the health mutation landed on health. But they got the low end of the stats, not the high end. So even the mutation landed correctly, it just didn't inherit the right stats. Yeah, so overall in the end, I only got the one, which is a melee melee, which is kind of funny because it now cancels out the fact that the others were a wave ahead because now this one's caught up and neither health nor weight's got a successful mutation. So them two can stay put. That one's going to be replaced by this one, which I'm now going to name health, no, melee, two out of 20. And uh, we just wait for another five hours. So it's been a bit of a while since the last clip. Again, this keeps on happening. And I've made quite a fair bit of progress with the Archon Davis. Uh, weight is at 16 out of 20 mutations. Health is at 15 out of 20 mutations. Melee, which is noticeably far behind, is 9 out of 20 mutations. Um, <laughs> that was amazing. Kind of hard to say if, like, I have been getting a lot of melee mutations. They just haven't been landing in the correct places or like, you know, the health or weight one to get the melee mutation or that melee mutation will just inherit the wrong stats from the mother. It's all a bit weird really, but uh, point being is I just want to demonstrate again the entire process. So since these are both female, I can just quickly do a gender swap on both of them. Chuck you and you there, good. And then replace the previous breeders of their predecessors. Create a pair of mutation pulses. And then once everything's properly irradiated, time to set them all back to breeding. Then we wait for the incredible sound of 30 eggs being laid at once. Hatch up all 30 eggs. And now I can check the stats once again. So at this point, it's gotten quite a bit easier where they're all very different in terms of their mutation progression lines. I know that the 362 is going to be from the weight stat, which got melee, so that's unfortunate. I know that belongs to the weight stat. All the 362s over here are also all from the weight stats. The 358s are all from the health stats, the 334s are from melee, and thus anything below 334 is just a failed mutation entirely. So as this has been going on, it's been getting quite a bit easier. 
Thankfully, it's the kind of thing that really does make sense and becomes very straightforward. Although, ah oh man, so you all from all the males to get a single successful mutation. That one's weight, uh, weight with melee. So like I said earlier, I have been getting a lot of melee mutations. They've just not been landing in the correct locations. Again here, I've gotten, what's this, triplets, health mutations, all on the weight line. So again, that just does not work. But I did get a health mutation on a health line. That is perfect. Well, if it was a male, it'd be even more perfect. But point being, at least I got some progress on this line. Meanwhile, quick trip back to the islands, and can I just say, it is so satisfying to look at all of these hundreds of Argentavis. Destroy all souls in terminal. Mwah. Gone. That was a lot of crap I did not need. And there's a couple more in here as well, actually. I just have hundreds of Argentavis. And it's good to know, I've, I've already checked out all the colours, I've already checked out the ones I don't need. The ones called Breeder as well are obviously now, well... I think I've still got a pair of, like, non-mutated ones if I ever wanted them. Uh, yeah, I've got two females right here, and I can go to breed one as a male, so... I've got the original ones, if I ever want them. No colours, yep, and destroy. That is so satisfying. And I just found another couple of hundred from the hatchery one. I'll just quickly dump all of that into here. That way it's out of the way. <laughs> That's a lot. I feel sorry for anyone I'm lagging out right now. Uh, let's see. Yep, I think these are again all just redundant ones. Uh, that was when I was trying to get the initial 50-50s and they're all gone. <laughs> That's nearly an entire level. Oh my god. Oh no, I keep thinking I finished and I just remembered. <laughs> I got all of this as well. Right, the 16 health female has been fully matured, gender swapped. The next generation is now ready to hatch. And let's see what the verdict is this time. Oh, there we go. So I got a 17 weight one. <laughs> Typical. I've also got a weight line with a health mutation and another weight line or health line with a melee mutation. So it's just a case of them landing in the wrong locations. Melee with health. And otherwise, the rest of the males all didn't inherit the correct stat. So skipping that back to the females. Got a female weight with 17. Do I already have that? I do. So that is not needed. Ah, oh, here we go. From the health line, we've got a female with 17 health. So that is another upgrade. And do we have any melee ones? No, not a single melee. Yeah, the melee line has been... I refuse to believe that melee is just a rare stat to mutate in, but it definitely is a lot harder to get it to land in the correct location. Yeah, so I've just checked, and of all of these RGs, five of them did roll melee mutations. It's just it's not the correct line, so... Let's see, these are on 17 out of 20, and that one's on 9 out of 20. That is almost practically halfway behind. Oh my god. So it's been about 10 days since I finally started breeding all the RGs, and now Mantis as well. <laughs> and since those 10 days, I've actually gotten 20 20 in health and weight. In fact, you may see, I have 21 out of 20 in health and weight. I'll get into that in a bit. Uh, meanwhile, the melee one is now at 14 out of 20, so definitely quite far behind, but this actually comes to a surprising benefit. So because I still need to max out the melee into 2020, I can keep on breeding weight and health meanwhile, because I can still get past 2020 stats, it's just now an entire extra element of RNG on top, and that's an element I was thinking about skipping, but since I've got to breed the melee anyway, it's the same resources, it's the same element, the same amount of time to do everything else, so I may as well keep going. Now, when it comes to sifting through all the mutations and making sure that I've got the right ones, it's actually going to be a little bit easier now because the 21 out of 20s on both of them, they're level 378. So now I know that if I get anything above level 378, like the 382s right here, I know they've got the extra gamble and managed to land a new mutation. So here's how it works, right? Uh, if I select, say, these ones here, the 354s, this is the melee line. Currently in the melee line, the mutation can land either maternal or paternal. It doesn't matter where it lands, it's always going to get a mutation every single time. But then once we look at the 378, so 21 out of 20s, or 20 out of 20, it can no longer land mutations on the paternal side, the blue side. It can only ever land mutations on the pink side. And as a result of this, even though all of these 378s were absolutely irradiated by the Espus mutator, they had guaranteed chances for mutations. You can see that all of these didn't land the mutation because they all landed paternal, whereas overcapped. Which means that these four 382s did land a mutation in maternal. 
and how lucky is that one? So this one right here landed the correct stats while also inheriting the correct stats since there's also still a chance that the 382s can just inherit the bad weight from the mother. It could land weight mutation but still inherit the bad weight such as this one right here that's entirely possible that that oxygen mutation could have landed weight instead and it just would have ruined it. But no this one here inherited maximum stats landed the correct mutation in the correct line so a weight line got a weight mutation and it happened to land maternal which means it wasn't overcapped and i can now keep this one so currently we can see one out of 20 21 out of 20 the next time i breed him this one is just gonna get moved over because this is gonna be the new father and the new father's stats or mutations will combine into 22 out of 20 paternal zero out of 20 for the next offspring and that is how you can keep on adding extra mutations after the 2020 cap and just for the sake of showing more on my mantis line i've got a health mutation in the health line and that is otherwise just about it everything else all of these other creatures none of their mutations landed correctly which means that in that entire pool of uh, 56 57 hatchlings only these two are worth keeping it's a good thing that these two mutators reach everything because otherwise this would be very very expensive all right it's been a couple of months doing this and i am officially sick of it <laughs> this is oh my god so i can't even remember if i said in the previous clip but as i was getting closer and closer i decided to try and hit maximum stats i did breach 200 on the health line i think this is the first 200 stat of anything on the server a lot of people have been doing a lot of their own uh, mutation breeding, but I think this is the first 200. Let's see, that one over there has got 195 weight. That one's got 200 uh, melee, and not to mention the mantis with 158 health. And the last one has 175 melee. And I'm, I'm done with it. <laughs> I'm absolutely done. So I'm just going to stop this for a while. What I'll do is I'm going to grab the last load of mutations now. Health stamina, I'll take that one since we don't have a stamina line. So we've got health stamina. The only mutation we have on the melee line is hunger. And I mean, I obviously don't need it, but I've got every other important stat covered. So I may as well keep hunger. So we've got melee, hunger, health, stamina. And that leaves us with weight. And I suppose I may as well have oxygen as well. <laughs> such a pointless combination but again these will not be named these will just be for the purpose of combining the very final stats and they all happen to be breeding pairs that's actually really quite handy so i've just brought all the hatchlings over to the island and i'm going to quickly set them all to mating and then do a growth pulse and that'll cause it to skip the entire breeding timer they'll just pop out eggs the moment they mature okay fingers crossed i got a combination immediately <laughs> what are the chances of that oh my god love wait no they they did they both completely combined and i got a breeding pair wow the chances of that i i don't even want to think about the chance of that oh my god okay well there we go then <laughs> fantastic level 630 did i get lucky a second time survey says oh seven seven eight Oof, I <laughs> I lost four measly points in stamina. Ah, oh, just four points. Wow, that was probably the fastest combination I've ever had. Considering it's the first time I've bred anything to this magnitude, that was a satisfyingly quick combination. Well, she is at last complete, at least for the time being. I may go back and kind of carry it on, but for the time being, Meet Saturn. I had a bit of a while thinking about different names and I thought like planet names would be really fun. I was gonna go Jupiter, but I thought nah, leave Jupiter for later. So I think Saturn will be a fun one. I've not decided on the colors. So originally I've got like a whole bunch of different Argentavis, uh, different color variants to breed into this. Uh, that way I can have like one different one for every map. But at the same time, I actually kind of like this one. I mean, it's a bit of a strange combination. Reminds me of um, certain tropical birds. I killed two characters, so first of all, always 2,000 stamina. Wow, I went over that quickly. Okay, 2,500 stamina. Um, the, <laughs> the health being a 19,000, which is absurd. Uh, I hate that it's not a round number, so there you go, 20,000. Now, I could either pump more into melee, or I could pump it all into weight. It's an Argentavis. 
I'm kind of thinking wait, because you could, you know, wait on an RG is always fantastic. But out of curiosity, how much damage does she actually do? Of course, the first thing I find is a 145 Parasaurotherium and a 130 Dire Bear. There you go, like I want, I don't think she'll do much. She does a fair bit. Oh my god, 500 from an Argentavus. <laughs> That's actually quite wild. Five, okay, 511. Uh, 524. Oh my god, that scales! Oh, I could just make her an attack bird. Oh, that is super duper tempting. That's crazy damage for a bird. Oh my god. There we go. Oh, imagine mate boost bonus. Oh no, imagine mate boost bonus. Well, not today, and I try to uterus and everything else. Oh, I'm gonna find a reason to have attack birds, but I think I will go full weight actually. Although having anything more than 3,000 seems incredibly excessive, but I will go for 4,000, 5,000? 5,000. Oh my god, that is such a big number. 3,000 stamina? Yeah, sure, there you go. Oh my, I'm not used to these kind of numbers. Not in vanilla anyway. Well, you know, vanilla-ish. Um, yeah, screw it. I'll just pop the rest into melee. <laughs> she does not need more than 3,000 stamina. That is loads for an Argent Davis. She does not need more than 5,000 weight. I think 20,000 health might be fine. So we've now got 1,800% melee. Let's go ahead then. Kill another creature. So what kind of damage you're looking at now? <laughs> 600. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Oh my god. Right, I am content, I am happy, I am finally going to call this video to an end. Hopefully it's not terribly long, I'll be doing a lot of editing to try and cut out the fat, because oh, this has been a long process. I, I, I will say that for, I, I'm not going to throw shade, but for other YouTubers that have, you know, like 256 or 255 static creatures, um, if they do it quickly, I am skeptical. At least, you know, if, if, if they say they cheated, fine, whatever. But if they, like, you know, quickly get 256 stats, I mean, obviously, depending on their uh, rates and such, I'm just going to say I'm skeptical because this, just to get 200 and 218, was an effort. But a very fun one, and I look forward to replicating this for many, many more creatures. Definitely more useful ones like Wivens and Kurchers. I think that'd be fantastic. Right then, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you all next time. Cheers.